All right, I want you to find something metal and touch it with your hand. Next, I want you to touch the paper or notebook that you're using to take notes on this video. You are taking notes, right? Which of those two things is colder? Let me guess, you said the metal. Well, actually, not so much. Unless one of them recently entered the room, or one part of your room is colder than a different part, and one of them was in that part of the room, they're probably exactly the same temperature. If you're now doubting your very senses, wondering if you can believe your eyes, or ears, or fingers, good, the learning has begun. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between heat and temperature. If your hand feels cold, what exactly does that mean? Is your hand a thermometer? Is it measuring temperature? No, not really. Your hands and your surface nerves in general can only detect heat transfers. They can detect when heat energy is moving from one place to another. Heat is a type of energy measured in joules that tends to move from hot places like your hand to cold places like the notebook or the metal. So if your hand has a higher temperature than the thing you're touching, heat is going to transfer from your hand to the other object. You can tell this is happening by your hand feeling cold. If your hand had a temperature higher than the surface of the sun, then even the sun would feel cold because heat would then transfer from your hand to the sun. But the funny thing is, not all objects conduct heat at the same rate. Metals, like the one you touched earlier, conduct heat really well so heat transfers out of your hand into the metal really, really quickly. But if you leave your notebook and a piece of metal in the same room for a while, or in the same part of a room for a while, it won't be too long until they reach the same temperature. They will be reach an equilibrium temperature, a thermal equilibrium temperature, meaning that they're the same temperature as each other and the same temperature as the room. The metal just feels colder because when you touch it, heat transfers faster. So your hand only detects the transfer of heat. It can't tell you whether an object is really hot or cold. It can't really tell you the temperature. Although it's true that cold objects will cause heat to transfer faster. But what exactly is temperature in the first place? Well, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance. The molecules in any object don't just sit still. Although you can't see it, molecules are always moving. In the case of solids, that means vibrating and bouncing against each other. In the case of liquids, that means sliding around each other. And in the case of gases, zooming all over the place. But they're always moving. The faster the average speed of those molecules, the higher the temperature. There are lots of scales that we can use to measure temperature, and some of them are more scientific than others. We have Celsius, we have Fahrenheit, and we have Kelvin. Celsius and Fahrenheit are the ones that you might see in a weather report. And this is how you convert between them. But neither of those are very scientific. Fahrenheit is terrible because each degree is a different size to the last degree. If you tell someone there's been a 10 Fahrenheit increase in temperature, that could mean practically anything from a tiny change to a huge change, depending on whether the temperature before it went up was really, really cold, like in the Arctic, or super hot, like at the equator. So it's really not a very good scale. Celsius doesn't have that problem, and neither does Kelvin. A two degree difference is Basically the same thing, doesn't matter whether it's super hot or super cold. Two degrees is two degrees. In the Celsius scale, zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes. But we can go much colder than that. In fact, we can go all the way down to negative 273 degrees C. That's the temperature at which molecules lose so much energy that they really do stop moving. They don't even vibrate anymore. It's called absolute zero. Even space doesn't reach absolute zero. There's always some radiation and a few molecules floating around randomly. The average temperature of space is two or three degrees above absolute zero. Now the Kelvin scale, the Kelvin scale is the most scientific one because instead of starting with zero at where water freezes, it starts at absolute zero. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero. Since absolute zero was negative 273 degrees Celsius, that means that water must freeze at 273 Kelvin, 273 degrees above absolute zero. So converting between Celsius and Kelvin is easy. All you have to do is just add or take away 273. And it also means that if you change your temperature by 30 degrees Celsius, you've also changed by 30 Kelvin, because the size of one degree Celsius is the same as the difference of one Kelvin. So far, we haven't even been able to reach absolute zero in the lab. 
the closest we've ever been able to get is 0.00000000001 Kelvin, which admittedly is pretty darn close. So there you have it, heat and temperature are not the same thing. So next time you're out walking in the snow, you won't say, gosh it's cold. Instead, thanks to your new physics knowledge, you'll say, gosh I'm transferring my body heat fast, there must be a large temperature differential between my body and the air. Because that's definitely something you would say, right? Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Feel free to like this video or subscribe, but most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning. Well, what would Picard do if he was trying to learn physics? He would make it so, and Picard would always stay engaged.